Alright. Me. All right, everybody. Welcome to Mokama Sunday Service. I am Omar Reed. I am an attorney and an investor uh, who got tired of my broker taking a ton of fees from my stock account and my trading account. Um, so I decided to start learning this stuff myself, get more acclimated to the stock market terminology. I've been doing this for about the last five years. Um, this is not investment advice. I am not a licensed financial professional. Uh, investing and trading is risky. Please consult your investment advisors regarding any and all trades. So with that, we're going to get started. Uh, today, DeAndre, Isaac, uh, two of my high school homies, uh, we are going to talk about fundamentals because we just had earnings of four of the largest companies in the world report over the last week. So that's where I wanted to start today is like, let's go over earnings. Uh, let me share my screen. Let's see. Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with Microsoft. I want three, $4 trillion company, the largest company in the world right now. I think it eclipsed Apple. Uh, a couple of months ago, right? As the largest company in the world, the most valuable company in the world, at least for the U.S. stock exchange. But, you know, we have the biggest uh, stock market in the world, right? So Apple, or not Apple, but Microsoft earnings. Uh, to get to the earnings report, what I always do is I'll just search the ticker and then investor relations, right? You get to the investors relations page, you can go to the details of what uh, their Microsoft's quarters are weird. Apparently, the first quarter for everybody else is quarter three for them. So you view the details, and then you'll get to this page. And then I came here, clicked financial statements um, to get to the actual financials of Microsoft. Right? You could download this. You could save it whatever, right? So if you go back to the press release, generally when they're issuing the press release, they're going to tell you some of the highlights. So right here, um, over the last quarter, their revenue was $61.9 billion and increased 17%. Operating income was $27.6 billion and increased 23%. Their net income, their profit increased 20%. It's $21 billion, right? And then you have the diluted earnings per share, which was $2.94, which increased 20%. This is what like a good earnings report looks like, right? Uh, Microsoft. And Microsoft always, you know, obviously nine times out of 10, Microsoft knocks it out of the park. Uh, right here, you could see over the last quarter what their revenue was, right? For our products, they made $17 billion. For services, they made $44.7 billion. Their total revenue was $61.8 billion, up from $52 billion the last quarter of last year. So that looks like growth. That's what you want to see typically for a company you're investing in long term, right? Um, let's see, what else? I always like the profit, right? This is a company that is actually making money. It made $21.9 billion in profit, right, in one quarter. So this is a company that's going to have a ton of cash. Uh, it's still growing at a really amazing rate for how big it already is. But this is why this is kind of like one of these staple stocks um, that continues to get better, at least in the near term. That's what it looks like, especially as they own a significant portion of OpenAI and are integrating all of these uh, these AI bots and, and LLMs into their software, um, eliminating employees because of AI uh, so that they can make more money and increase their margins. Um, that's what Microsoft is doing right now. If you look at their cash flow, I always look to see 
how much cash they have on hand. So for this quarter, Microsoft has $19.6 billion of cash just sitting, right? That's amazing. Like to just have like some extra cash sitting around for potential investments, uh, for a rainy day, if something happens, Microsoft just has $19.6 billion of cash sitting, um, and it keeps making more money every quarter. Right? That makes sense? Yes, sir. All right. And then if you look yeah. at... If you, sense. if you look at the expectations, which is what earnings are about, is what were people expecting... Um, They were expecting Microsoft to have an earnings per share of $2.84, or $2.84, and it reported $2.94, which was, you know, uh, it beat the expectations. The revenue, uh, Wall Street was expecting $60.89 billion, and it reported $61.86 billion, so it beat expectations. So what happens typically when a stock beats expectations, well, what happened here on Microsoft is you saw a gap up, right? It was around $400 the day before, and then it opened the next morning at around $412. So stock price went up. It did fall towards the end of the day, but you'll see, right, that that the earnings report, people reacted to it more positively than negatively, especially during the after hours. And if you want to see what happened during that gap, we're on a day chart right now, right? One year, one day. Go to a 30-minute chart or an hour chart to see what happened during the uh, the aftermarket, right? So this is what happened. Microsoft did this the day before earnings. And then when earnings hit after hours, what happened? Investors generally liked it. You're going to see some of these wicks up and up and down, which I think are probably dark pool related. But generally, people liked what they saw from Microsoft's earnings, investors. And in the aftermarket, they bought it up. And it came. So what do you mean by dark pool? Uh, there are larger investors and larger funds and hedge funds that have different abilities than an average retail investor like ourselves. So um, the government lets them kind of trade offline. So some of this stuff that happened in the aftermarket could have just been reported at this time, but actually happened at this time. You feel me? So Mm. some of the stuff aftermarket, like this wick down, you see how this is probably like a, a five second wick and then back up. This is probably reporting activity of a trade that happened right when they reported. But, you know, it, it wasn't on like your standard platforms or through your standard brokerages, probably some billion dollar hedge fund trader that did this at some other time that was reported here. So that's why some of the aftermarket stuff looks like this from time to time, like this big wick right here. You wouldn't have actually had an opportunity to probably buy this right here at this time, given that price action had already lifted up so you know so heavily. Like all of this up here looks real, but this doesn't, you know, considering it stayed up here. So, but this is just showing you the reaction. What do people think about Microsoft's earnings? Well, you go in the aftermarket, people received it well. You have this big green candle. So, and then it came back, it gave a little bit back during the actual day trading. You'll see this gray area is aftermarket or pre-market trading. And then the general session uh, that starts at 6.30 PST or 9.30, you know, uh, uh, East Coast time. This is the actual candle. It sold off a little bit, but not nearly like to the level where it was the day before. So people reacted pretty positively to Microsoft's earnings. I would say it didn't kill earnings, but it it beat expectations, which is great, you know. All right, let's go back to All right, now let's talk about another company, Tesla. 
you know, I've been talking crap about Tesla for the last couple of months, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so same thing. If you want to get to Tesla's earnings, type in uh, Tesla Investor Relations. Click on the tab, and then. Now, what's up with the news uh, with them becoming a AI company? Supposedly, what Elon's <laughs> professor. See, this is the issue that I have with Tesla. <laughs> Right now, to me, they're a car company. They are a car company, right? But it's getting the type of valuation it's getting because everybody is classifying them as a tech company. And if this were valued as a car company, like a GM or a Ford, I think the value would be way lower. Now, as a tech company, you get higher multiples. So this is why people are still buying Tesla but their earnings were crap. And see this, I just think the expectations were so low because the stock had already been falling and had fallen so much that the earnings weren't as bad as everyone expected them to be. But they were bad, if you ask me, right? So let's let's go to the, uh, it missed, right? They, they were expecting earnings per share of 50 cents. It reported 45 cents. Right, that's a miss by almost what nine. That's nine percent revenue. People were expecting twenty two point two six billion. It reported twenty one point three billion. That's down from last year. So I still don't like Tesla from a fundamental standpoint. The stock price and technicals and potentially day trading it or swinging it is a different question. But from a long term perspective, right now, like I don't like what I'm seeing. Look at the quarter before it missed. The quarter before that, it missed. That's three bad quarters in a row. Why would I be buying this right now when there's other things like when that Google trade, Google reported a beat, but its stock price was down. So I would rather be in a stock that is beating expectations whose stock price has gone lower versus a company who is missing expectations and whose stock price is still going lower, right? So that's the problem I have with Tesla. Personally. Google too? Huh? You're going to go over Google also? Yep, yep. That's going to be the last one I do. All right. So let's talk about Tesla, their earnings specifically, uh, quarterly, right? This quarter, last quarter, it was $18.8 billion in automotive sales. This quarter, 16.4. That's negative. And if you look at like a, just, a juxtaposition between this stock and what we just looked at at Microsoft, it's going in yeah. the opposite direction, right? So I would rather buy Microsoft right now than Tesla, at least from that's how I think about things from a long-term standpoint, right? I would rather buy Microsoft. Um, I just don't like their numbers. Uh, what's their net income? It's down. Right, it was 2.5 billion in profit last quarter. Now it's only 1.14 uh, 1.14 billion. Right, so that's down. Now they are doing better than the Rivians and the the Fiskers and the Lucids of the world, but I, I just don't like the car industry right now in general. Um, actually, though, but some of the the staple car um, manufacturers did report some decent earnings. Right, but from a growth standpoint, I'm looking for growth in my long term in my IRA and my retirement accounts. Like I just don't like what Tesla's doing right now. What happened though is Elon got on a conference call. See, and what you'll see is that um, when you uh, when you see earnings coming out. You're going to see the actual numbers come out, let's say, right when the market closes at 1 p.m. PST or 4 p.m. Eastern, right? The numbers will come out. But then what will happen next is the CEO or the CFO will come on and talk about the earnings, usually within 30 minutes after the release, sometimes 30 minutes to an hour after the release. And depending on what the CEO and CFO says, that can also have an effect on the stock price, right? So if Tesla reports bad earnings, but then Elon comes on and starts hyping up AI and robo taxis and self-driving cars and all of this stuff that pumps up the stock, 
then you can see a company like Tesla that reported bad earnings. I just showed you they missed expectations. But if you go look at their stock price, um, what did they report all on Tuesday? It was right here. Look what happened. It was down and then bam, it pops up after the earnings because they didn't miss as badly as everyone expected them to miss. And then Elon comes on on the call. I wonder if I can see that on a five minute chart. Uh, I think it was this day. Right. And looking at this action, it looks like it was kind of wild. And then Elon got on that conference call. What was it about 30 minutes after reporting right here? And what happened? Start pumping up the stock once he started talking about AI and robo taxis and humanoids and stuff like that, right? So if you go look at the price action, so they liked that the numbers weren't that terrible. Then it kind of came down a little bit and kind of stayed up, right? So it looks like, okay, so that's decent. And then Elon starts talking on the conference call and puts some, some fairy pixie dust on the stock. And that's what it does, right? And then since then, oh, I hate this chart. Since then, it gapped up, and the last few days, it's been doing pretty well, right? I still don't like it. I still would be more likely to short Tesla than I would to buy it, especially since it's kind of reaching some of these higher moving averages. Like next week for me, I might think about shorting Tesla just because I didn't like the earnings. They weren't as bad as everyone thought they were going to be, but they weren't good, <laughs> right? They weren't good. Um, just looking at some of the things that they were talking about, look at their numbers. They're down. Like Their production was down. Their deliveries were down from last <laughs> quarter. Like... They're cutting prices, which means their margins are going to go down. I don't like the company long term right now. Now, if they actually start making money from humanoids, if they actually um, have a robo taxi that actually goes into service, and you know how Elon is with his projects, like he says, oh, we're, this is going to happen in 2025, and then we don't see it until 2027. So that's what I don't like about Tesla. I'm not going to keep beating up on this stock, but you know, it's up. But I'm more likely to short it than I am to buy it, specifically long term. Um, I still don't like where it looks from, like, if you, you zoom out. I don't like that. It's going down. If it gets above the 200, maybe it, you know, changes its ways. If, so really about 205, 204, then, I, then maybe you could get more bullish on it. But I need to see the money. I need to see the profits. Like I just showed you the actual like you know income statements. I want to see where the money is. The profits looks like they're going down. So why am I buying this stock whose profits are going down? I don't know. Yeah, that's just how I feel. Anyway, so moving on to Meta. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to Meta, right? So this is a stock that. It's actually pretty crazy because they beat expectations. They are growing revenue, but their stock price went down at the earnings. And that is because their stock price had been going up so high, they needed to blow away earnings, not just beat. Um, so this is that I wanted to show you uh, uh, the difference between a Tesla who missed on earnings and whose stock price went up versus a Meta who beat on their earnings and their stock price went down, right? And so for me, this is kind of what I'm looking for from a long-term investment. Like Meta is growing earnings and their stock price is going down. So I want to wait for Meta to go on a significant pullback because this is similar to my Google trade. A good stock that's actually making money, that's growing profits, whose stock price is down, that's what I want to be buying, all right? So quarter, they made the last quarter in 2023, the similar quarter, $28.6 billion. This quarter, they made $36.4 billion. That's great, right, from a, a revenue growth. Uh, profit, 
They made five point seven billion in profit last quarter. This quarter they made twelve point three billion. They doubled their profit. That's what I'm looking for in a company. Um, their diluted earnings per share was two two dollars and twenty cents last quarter. This quarter is four dollars and seventy one cents. So for me, like I like I love that. Right, that looks that looks good to me. Um, if you want to kind of go see what their segment information and where they're getting their money from, Meta is all advertising, right? They got some ancillary uh, revenue and whatnot coming in. And then they don't really strip out like the difference what's coming from Instagram versus WhatsApp or, or Facebook. Um, they just kind of lump it all in. But um, that's where their advertising or, or that's where their revenue comes from is from advertising, from ads that you see when you're scrolling through the Instagram yeah. or, or Facebook feed, uh, or your stories or your reels. Right. Um, right. So that makes sense, but that's, that's their one trick pony, but it's, it keeps working. Right. They keep growing. Um, and they beat expectations by a lot. Right, their earnings per share was expected at four dollars and thirty six cents, came in at four dollars and seventy one. Eight percent beat. Uh, their revenue was expected at thirty six point two two billion. It came in at thirty six point four six. It was a small beat, and this is why I think this happened. If we go to Meta, So Meta was right here before earnings, and then it dropped precipitously because people thought that it was going to do better than it did. You see? Um, in, terms, okay. in terms of expectations, sometimes expectations can be everything. So everyone expected Meta to have blowout earnings and it did okay, decently okay. And since it did decently okay and everyone was expecting amazing earnings, it still dropped, which is why if you are trading earnings, it can be a crapshoot, which is why I don't recommend trading before earnings. Um, just understand that it's like buying a lottery ticket or a scratch off, you just don't know. Um, how people are going to interpret its earnings. So if we zoom in on a smaller time frame right here, so Meta that day before earnings, it reports after the market, look at that huge red candle. Then people thought it was going to, bam, it was going to prop up right there, and then we got another one. And so for me, if Meta ever gets back down to $400 ever again, that's where I'm buying. <laughs> that's my number. <laughs> In fact, do I have an alert on? <laughs> Let me put an alert on right now. If it gets to 405, let me know. Because what did I just show you? I just showed you that Meta is a good company. It's doubling its revenue, its profit. This is a good company. You want to buy good companies at reasonable valuations or when they are lower. So we saw this really good company that's that's reporting that it's doubling its earnings drop. That's the type of company that I want to buy when it's at a pullback. Now you finally have an opportunity to get it at a discount from one of its highs, right? I need to change this Fib level here. But this high was 531. It is now almost a hundred dollars underneath that, and if it goes back to four hundred, um, around right there or around that tw or that two hundred day moving average, that's really where I want to buy Meta. But it's a good company; it's making money, it's doubling its revenue. I don't think, and then with the TikTok news, like potentially having to shut down or sell, Instagram and and YouTube are going to get stronger, right? Yeah. Um, People are going to flock back there if they shut down by the end of the year or within a year. They have a year, depending on how. Sale, right? Yeah, it depends on how it gets played out in the courts. Like, it depends on if the courts overturn Congress's action. But when do Democrats and Republicans agree on anything? 
<laughs> and, and they agreed on banning TikTok, both. So that seems pretty strong to me that they're either going to have to sell or they're saying they may not want to sell it. They might shut it down. If they shut down TikTok, who is the biggest beneficiary? Meta and Google. So this is one that I'm looking at where if it pulls back down here, man, that's 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 one that I think from a long term, I like that that big bar, but I'll I'll probably take a shot at it around four hundred dollars. If if it gets down there, I don't know if it'll get down there, but it'll be discounted enough. It's a company that's doubling its revenue and its profits quarter over quarter and it's down. That's the one that I want on a pullback. That's just how I think about, like, you know, when everyone else is selling, once that gets exhausted, like, I wish I would have got it right here at that 415, but I really wanted at that 400 because that's how that's how low it got. And then zeros, like uh, nice round numbers, like 400, 500,000 stocks tend to use those those numbers as support and resistance. So. If it gets close to 400 again, I'm, I'm probably going to jump into Meta either with a leap or by buying the shares. All right, All right so that's Sounds Meta. like a plan. I'll right. put an alert too then. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Google is the last one. Uh, this is my baby right now. <laughs> I got, We got in at the right time. Isaac, you shouldn't have sold. You would have been up 4X instead of... Yeah, I'm losing that It's all right. I saw after earning that. You're cutting out, bro. Um, but yeah, so same thing. Google, uh, it's Alphabet. That's the name of the company now. But if you want to find um, their earnings, investor relations tab, right? And then go to the earnings release. And this is what you'll get is the report, right? Google blew it away. Theirs are different. 2023 over here, 2024 over here, this quarter, right? Um, last quarter, 69.7 billion. This quarter, 80.5 billion in revenue. Google killed it. People thought search was dead. They thought AI was killing search. Nuh-uh. People are still using Google to search. And people are paying them more than ever. And but you have a YouTube boosts a lot of that revenue, though. No, actually, look. So this is why I have this page up. Search is forty six point one billion. YouTube is only eight billion dollars. Oh, this is their growth. See, and this is why I like Google because I think YouTube is going to get bigger, especially if TikTok dies. YouTube is yeah. going to get bigger. And my daughter, she doesn't watch anything but YouTube. So it also has a young and an old user yeah. base that keeps growing. So that I is think true. this is where the growth is going to be in the future, personally. <laughs> like, and, and I just started up YouTube ads. I'm spending $2,000 a month in YouTube ads right now um, that I just added to my, my meta ads uh, for my business. So I like YouTube. It's the best arbitrage opportunity right now for ads. Like it costs like so for my business as a personal injury lawyer, it costs anywhere from five hundred to eight hundred dollars a click on uh, standard Google search for like personal injury lawyer near me or car accident attorney or or something like that. Right. It's five hundred to eight hundred dollars just for a click, not a lead. My YouTube ads my uh, cost per click is only a dollar fifty, and I'm targeting the same people who are. Searching. Oh, what? Yes, it's my arbitrage. I can show you really quickly too. Your CPC is that that low? Yeah. Yes. On on for YouTube ads specifically, I'll show you. I know we're going off, but since we're talking about Google, I'll go directly into my ad platform. So my cost, no, my CPC is the dollar eighty five this month. Versus and what's your yeah. well right now my conversion is three hundred six bucks for YouTube, okay. but but for me my 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 cases like my my lowest value case that yeah. I'll take is going to be worth five thousand dollars so so a three hundred dollar conversion cost for me is great but what I'm saying yeah. is it costs five hundred dollars per click for Google search ads for me versus a dollar eighty five per click on YouTube. 
that's like a crazy arbitrage. And that's what I've seen. So I don't do Google search ads because if someone clicks my ad, it, that's $800 gone in LA County or San Bernardino County. But here on YouTube, I can target people that are searching those same terms and get that $800 or $500 cost down to $1.85. So that's why I do a lot of video ads is because it's way more cost effective for me to do a video ad than a search ad on Google. And they're the same company. Google and YouTube are owned by Google or Alphabet. So it's the same company. Same. They're the, the number one search engine is Google. The number two search engine is YouTube. But they share data. So it's pretty much the same thing. But I found a way to get that cost per click down to $1.85 instead of, you know, $500. So I have a question. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're talking about the stocks that are obviously thriving. And what... And what stocks would you necessarily look at to do the opposite, to short? Uh, number one, you don't ever really want to short anything long term. Most people short things to hedge their current positions in their portfolio or short term because the market is rigged to kind of stay up over time. So short for me, it's like when you're shorting something, your timing needs to be impeccable. You need like you need to know from a timing perspective, is this going to go down today or is it going to go down next week? But your timing needs to kind of be spot on if you're going to short. So for shorts, I'm looking at the weakest stuff in the market. What's what is in a weak sector, a weak index and a weak stock within that sector or index? That's going to be my best short opportunity. So for me, Tesla has been really weak. Uh, it's been strong over the last couple of days, but over the last few months, it's been weak. So if I'm going to short any of these four that we're talking about today, it's going to be Tesla. Not that I would short Tesla either. I probably could find something weaker, but I'm going to short the weakest out of these four. If we looked at all of these earnings, who has the weakest earnings? That's a question. Oh, Tesla has the weakest earnings out of the ones that we talked about. Yeah, so if I were going to short any of those, I would be most likely to short Tesla. But I want to short it at an edge. And that's kind of what we talked about last week. Um, I don't want to be in no man's land. I want to short it when it's near uh, resistance or not support, but I want to short it when it gets near resistance. So just we're kind of taking a tangent, but like, so going back to Tesla's, Oh, it's the week chart. Let's go to a day chart. Um, I see resistance potentially kicking in. Um, kind of this fib level right here has kind of served as support and resistance in the past. And Tesla is very volatile, which is why it's kind of tricky. But like this 34 moving average. Uh, right there, right? It's touched it, bounced down, touched it, bounced down. Right here, looks like it's wicking down off of it. So potentially on Monday, that's the edge that I would like would be this 34. And then maybe set a stop at the top of this wick right there. And then hope that if Tesla crosses, what, what's the bottom? What's the, the low? Like 166. If it, if it goes below 166, then short it because you got all of this room down here, especially if you get this gap fill after earnings back down here. There's just more there's more upside to shorting Tesla, I think, than going up after it reported earnings that weren't that great, if you ask me. <laughs> That's so I think it went up a lot. Uh, I think it went up a lot. I think it's overextended. So I don't I, I would play a reversal to come back down at least to here. Maybe as target one would be to get down to like 159 and then target two would be around like trying to fill this gap at like 147 or something like that. 147.50. That's how I would go about shorting Tesla. But like I said, it's all about timing. I wouldn't try to short it unless it breaks this low 
of this candle. That's just how I trade. If I were to trade this as a reversal to start coming back down, and my thesis would be Tesla didn't report great earnings and went up. So how I said with Meta, Meta reported decent earnings and went down. That's why I wanted to reverse to the upside. Tesla reported poor earnings and went up, which is why I would be more likely to expect it to reverse to the downside. But I also know that Tesla is heavily weighted in the NASDAQ, in uh, XLC. Tesla is heavily weighted, right? So if I were to short Tesla, I would be more confident shorting Tesla if the NASDAQ was down and XLC were down on that same day. Then I'd be more confident shorting Tesla, let's say, on Monday. Okay, that, right. that makes sense. Right? Same thing. And if tech, if all the tech is down on Monday, I would be more confident shorting Tesla to the downside. So that's why I say shorts are complicated. A lot of people will use them to hedge their positions. If I'm up a certain amount in the position already and I want to keep those gains and we have uh, CPI or PCE or earnings coming up and I want to make sure I lock in those gains, I might short some of my shares or one of my positions to make sure that I don't lose everything if, if the stock turns around or goes the opposite direction that I'm expecting before earnings or some sort of volatility event. Right. Before the Fed let's speaks. Let's Go. check out Amazon. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me let me finish up on Google just, just really quickly. So yeah. so from Google, uh YouTube is growing in terms of their ads, at least it did last quarter. Uh their subscriptions are up. Their cloud revenue is up from seven point four billion to nine. These this is another area where it could grow. In addition to YouTube ads, their cloud revenue could grow and their services revenue. Oh, this is the, their total, right? So just in general, 61 billion, 61.9 billion, and 70.3 billion. Cloud revenue. What, set, go ahead. What's other bets? Uh, I don't know. Probably little random projects that they have. They're gotcha. all like Google Glass or some. just think of something else that they shut down way back when. Now everybody, if Google would have continued with Google Glass, now you see Meta and Apple entering into the space. Like, but it's yeah. it started that whole line of like wearable technology and kind of stopped. So I would assume these other bets could be investments and things, uh, companies, smaller companies, technology uh, projects, things of that nature. You know, right? So that's that's Google, great company, and then more importantly. It announced its first ever dividend, and we talked about dividends, right? So a lot of these growth companies don't pay dividends, um, and Google has so much cash on hand that it can pay a dividend, and so that's like you getting a rental and getting a certain amount of a certain amount of money every month from your rental property, right? Your dividend while the stock or the house is still appreciating at the same time. So Google is paying dividends now. It wasn't a huge dividend, but you know, to get some extra cash back if you're a shareholder in addition to the stock price going up and it making more money, that made more people want to buy it, right? So oh, I'm going to see if we can go look at how much cash it has on hand. Yeah, I wish I would have held on to that one. All right, though, I'll make some money off of it. Uh, let me see at the top if I can find the cash flow. Cash on cash on hand. Google has twenty four billion dollars just sitting. That's what I want to see from from a company. If times get tough, Google has enough cash to just chill. <laughs> Microsoft has enough cash to just chill. Meta has enough cash to just chill. So if interest rates keep climbing, they don't need to borrow money. They have so much cash that they're making and their net income and their profits are so high and their cash is so good. They can invest in new technologies and AI technologies. 
these are the companies that I would be betting on like holding because they just have the, they have the firepower to compete with all of this cash just sitting versus what we said Tesla Tesla actually has some decent cash on hand too well you know 12.4 billion so that's maybe that's why people like Tesla I just don't like where its revenues are going but it also does have a lot of cash sitting as well uh, is that it wait yeah Tesla got 12 billion in cash sitting too that's because its business model is is amazing um, Tesla uh, makes your car when you order it versus uh, the standard inventory model where uh, GM produces a car, a certain amount of it, puts it on a lot, and you come on a lot and try to buy it. Tesla doesn't spend any money producing its cars until it already has money in hand. So that's why its business model is better than a lot of the other car manufacturers. All right. All right. So that's where we are. We will hit Amazon, and that actually goes into uh, going into the macro for next week. Uh, because Amazon reports earnings next week. Where are we on the first? Wait, why does this look different? It's not my normal earnings calendar. I usually use the NASDAQ. Yeah. Monday. Nobody huge. Tuesday, Amazon. Amazon, Eli Lilly, Coke, AMD, we got some more heavy hitters too. So we're in the thick of earnings season. Last week was were, were four of the largest companies, which is what we went over. This week, uh, we got Amazon, Eli Lilly. Amazon is worth $1.8 trillion. Eli Lilly is worth $688 billion. Coke, $266 billion. AMD, almost $250 million. McDonald's, Starbucks. Right. And then Wednesday, MasterCard, Qualcomm, Pfizer, huge company, CVS. Thursday, we got Apple, Novo Nordisk, uh, two huge companies, Shell, some more oil and energy, Amgen, booking, travel. Uh, and Friday, you got Berkshire Hathaway. Right. So this is another huge week for earnings because specifically, I would say the two largest, Amazon, Eli Lilly. And then Apple, Amazon and Eli Lilly are going to affect consumer products, tech, um, and Eli Lilly is going to affect healthcare. AMD is going to affect the chips space. And then Apple, of course, is heavily weighted in the S&P and the NASDAQ. So that's going to move the market depending on what they do. They're worth $2.6 trillion right now as a market cap. So if we look at Amazon, we go look at the stock. Right now, it would be tricky to buy it because we're right before earnings, right? It did gap down because of meta earnings, but then when Google reported great earnings, it came right back. <laughs> so this should tell you, too, from a relationship standpoint, Amazon is tied to Facebook and Google to a certain extent because when, when meta dropped, when it reported its earnings, so did Amazon. And then when Amazon, when then when Google reported great earnings, Amazon came right back with Google. And Google's chart looks similar to this as well, but actually a little higher. Right? Oh, we didn't even look at Google's chart. Let's look at Google's chart. Look at that huge gap. When it reported that dividend, when it reported that it beat its earnings expectations. That, that mess gapped up, right? Mm -hmm. We got somebody's TV in the back, right? So huge gap up. Me and Isaac bought Google on this day, <laughs> right? This is what, this was the candle that we bought it. We bought it because I like buying things when they touch the 200-day exponential moving average, which is this yellow line that I plot on all of my charts. So I purchased it right there. Took a couple of days of wiggle, went up. I, it came back right here. Isaac sold it on this candle or this day for about a thousand dollar profit. 
I held because I liked that it was above the 50 and the 200. And it was more of a long-term play for me. And then it kept kind of going up slowly. Came back down the day before earnings, gapped up. I made $4,500 uh, total across three accounts on this day. Um, but from, from Did you end up selling them? Nope. Still got it. It's long term. Why would I? Google looks bullish. I just showed you the earnings. Yeah, and, nice. And it's and it's issuing a dividend. Um, so why would I sell it now? I'm just gonna I'm gonna hold it because it looks like that 170 is gonna serve as new support for it. So I'm I'm gonna hold them. And what I should have done is I should have bought multiple contracts in each account so that I could scale out and I would have sold one and held one. But since I only have one contract and, and three accounts, I'm holding, especially for, I bought it for my daughter because I told you she loves YouTube. So I assume when she gets older, YouTube is going to be bigger than it currently is. So I'm holding it in her account until probably three months before exp expiration since I bought it about a year and a quarter out. Uh, so maybe March of next year is when I'll think about selling them all or converting them into shares. Um, but no, I'm holding, uh, while it's bullish, look at, and look at the volume on that too. Look at how many people bought. So yeah, everyone, Google, and it's at an all time high. So it could do some NVIDIA like stuff, right? Google's at a, it's the, Google is more valuable than it's ever been today. There's nothing stopping it from going. Maybe, like I said, I like nice round numbers. So at 200. I have a feel like that's probably when it, it that's probably maybe when it'll hit some resistance because people like to sell at nice round numbers. So 200 is its next stop where I think people may start selling it. But it reported blowout earnings. It beat expectations by 25 percent on earnings per share and it beat on the revenue and issued a dividend. So it's in the AI race. It has an AI bot. It's potentially going to be in partnership with Apple uh, to integrate into iPhones, to integrate Gemini into iPhones. So I like it. And so going back to Amazon, Amazon is near an all-time high right now. I don't like buying things at all-time highs. So I would love Amazon... If it got back down to like 155, because I always like buying things, like I said, around their 200 day exponential moving averages just above them. So if Amazon got to, uh, hold on. Say 155.50, I want to start looking at it. So yeah, I'll create an alert like that, and I'll usually put a note in, like what I, what was I thinking when I put the alert in? Um, that's about when I would try to buy Amazon, or even this low right there, if you want to be more aggressive. What kind of trend do you think it's at right now? I don't know. Earnings are going to tell us everything on Tuesday. I tell you, I wouldn't trade anything right before earnings, or I would get out right before earnings, but I don't know. Tuesday will tell us if its earnings are terrible, it's going to go down. If the earnings blow it out of water like Google and they issue a dividend or something like that, then earnings are going to go up. I have a feeling Apple might do something like that, like start issuing a dividend, um, which will push the price up. So, you know, we're in that Apple trade right now. But same thing with Apple. Uh, right now, we're in a trade. It was going decently well right now, but earnings are going to be everything when it reports. I do think, though, that the bar for Amazon, because of this positive trend, it did go down over the last week, but this positive trend, it's well above. It's 21, 34, 50, and 200. Amazon has higher expectations than Apple because Apple recently has been in a downtrend. 
So Apple is not going to need to blow it out of the water as much as Amazon needs to for earnings because Am Apple has been in a downtrend where it's below its 21, its 34, its 50. It's above the 200, but Apple is weaker than Amazon and has been over the last month. Right? If you look at this as the last month or two, Amazon is way stronger than Apple has been over the last month or two. So Amazon is going to need to clear a higher bar than Apple is going to have to clear as far as earnings are concerned because Apple going down from 199, let's do a quick calculation, 166 divided by 199, it dropped 16, 17% when you and I bought, bought that leap, Isaac. So it had already corrected a little bit when we, when we purchased. So Apple doesn't tend to fall, fall like a lot of these other stocks like Tesla. Even when the, we were in a bear market, Apple still only went to like 50% of value, never even got to that 200 moving. Well, this is a weekly chart. Never, never got like as far down as the NVIDIAs and AMDs and other tech stocks did or PayPal's or a lot of these other stocks that went to like what five-year lows. Apple still held up pretty well and it doesn't move as much. So for me, that's kind of what I'm hoping the stock does. If it, were, if it beats on its earnings expectations, then I feel like it's going to have a pop back up, right? And for me, what is what I say? My first target, since I bought two leaps in each account, uh, in my wife's account and my account, my first target for Apple, if it gets to that 200 day right there, see we're below it on Apple right now. And you see here it bounced off. Here it bounced off. We zoom in a little bit. So that's going to serve as resistance. That's where I want to sell my first contract on Apple. It would be around 177. And then leave a runner just in case it blows out earnings. And who knows? We might have an earnings and it might gap back down to where we, we bought it at or further down. Then I'll probably get out from the long term uh, standpoint because this is where my, my stop is, is around 164. I'll probably hold on until 163.50 or 163.75 or something like that. But if I don't think, and this is just me reading the tea leaves, Apple's going to have to have really horrible earnings for it to, to do any worse than it's been doing over the last three months, right? We already know it's China sales numbers are down. This is the reason why it's been gapping down. And they already came down. So I think a lot of the bad information on Apple is priced in. They also have an, uh, a conference coming up, a technology conference coming up soon in May, where I think they're going to uh, like finally unveil a lot of their potential AI products, which I think is going to be a potential boon for the stock. So let's see. Apple um, tech event. It's May 7th, right? And that's when they're going to talk about a new something, a new product, a new whatever, right? So usually before these events, the stock tends to run. So that's another reason why I wanted to hop into Apple too, right? Does that make sense? Am I making sense? <laughs> Okay, um, so I think that's it. You know, we went over uh, some of these big tech stocks. We went over all the tech stocks, the major ones that reported last week. We went over Amazon and Apple that are reporting earnings this week. Um, so I think that's it for this week. Uh, I wanted this to be more of like a fundamental analysis lesson. When people are talking about the fundamentals of a company, they're talking about is threatened. some. Somebody, My enemies often. Some, I don't know who that was, but when people are talking about the fundamentals of a company, that's what they're talking about. How much money are they making? Are their revenues up? Are their revenues down? Are they growing? Are they shrinking? Uh, the specific revenue segments that are more important, like cloud computing or YouTube, is that up or down? Um, so that's what we're talking about with fundamentals of a company. 
technical analysis, we're talking about price action or the stock price, right? So that's the major difference. Today we went over fundamentals. Uh, like I said, we'll be doing this every Sunday going forward, uh, talking about the stock market so that people can get a better understanding of how to trade, how to invest long term, how not to just rely on your stockbroker or your financial advisor to be able to see whether or not your financial advisor or stockbroker are telling you the right things or whether you could just do this yourself, right? Um, if you like the information that I provide on this channel, please subscribe to my channel. But that's it for this week. See you guys later. Have a good one. Isaac Deontre. Talk to you guys. And Chris, who joined us late. <laughs> All right, y'all. Yeah, appreciate you, man. All right. Peace.